Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to configure FTD using FDM, the Firewall Device Manager, which is the onboard local manager to allow management from the internet or the outside interface. So now let, let's take a quick look at the setup. Right, so if you have followed my last video on how to deploy FTDV in KVM, the setup is similar with a slight change to the various IP address. Uh, so we have a public IP address that is configured for uh, the KVM. Internally, we have uh, mapped the you know inside IP address and to allow port forwarding to the IP table or the outside interface of the FTDV so that uh, the traffic can go through the IP table, KVM and to the internet, right? So it's like a two tier firewall whereby this is uh, our FTDV behind the first tier IP table firewall. So then next we have also configured the management IP address and as well as the inside IP and we have a client sitting inside the network which I'm using VNC to connect to the KVM uh, and we'll show you how do we manage the FDM from the uh, inside client itself. So picture this, right? If it's a remote location, you don't have a um, you know uh, management capability remotely, you will probably have to configure your FTDV before you send it down or you have to get uh, somebody on the remote office with the client to configure the FTDV. Now, once you set up the FTDV to allow management from the outside interface, then you know you could be managing the uh, firewall threat defense from anywhere uh, you know uh, that you have access to the FTD, right? Remotely, maybe from the HQ or from your home, right? So, of course, if you have CDO, then that solves uh, takes away a lot of the problem of uh, you know manually setting up some of this management. Uh, it allows you to have a central web management uh you know interface to manage all the various FTD uh, that you have deployed across multiple locations. Now of course you have to pre-set up the FTDV before you ship so that it can be plug and play. So you need somebody to just plug in the device, you know, label the cable properly and you're you're good to go. So but before you get to that right uh, now if you have deployed FTD for a remote location and you want to manage the FTDV from your home or your headquarter then you need to have a way to allow the FTD uh, to be managed right through the outside management interface. This is the straightforward uh, easy scenario uh, whereby we just expose the outside management so that it can be managed from the outside interface. Uh, I will also show you in the next tutorial how do you map uh, the outside interface to the management port so that you don't have to expose the outside management interface and then you can put in place some access control rules uh, and do some custom port mapping to allow that to happen. Okay, but for this tutorial, it's very straightforward. It's just turning on the uh, outside management interface, right? So now let's hop over to the VNC that I have, uh, you know, launched, right? Uh, so let's take a quick look at the FTDB is running. We look at the information, the port assignment out, uh, management is inside on dot zero two and then uh, the outside interface is on 172.16.1. Okay, so that's the way I label my bridge for easy identification. Okay, so that's correct. Once you validate that, we can close this. Uh, let's hop over to the Windows 11 client that I have behind. So I've gotten the DHCP set up so I can see my uh, IP address has changed, right? To dot two hundred instead of one 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 nine nine. If you remember my last tutorial, right? Uh, so this is two hundred. Okay. So now let's launch a browser. Key in the IP address HTTPS slash one seven two dot sixteen dot two dot. 45 I might have login already so yep so I've logged in before this so you can see that you know straight away I am able to log in with the cache right so if you're logging in uh, you know after a certain time you st you need to key in the username and password uh, to log in again so 
so once you log in to the FDM, right, the firewall device manager, uh, just go over to the management access here. Then select data interface. The rest of the default setting is can leave it as it is, uh, but you know, data interface is where we configure the settings. Okay, and then click on add. Okay, change the interface to outside. All right, so we're gonna allow access through the outside management interface. The allow network is where you want to specify, uh, you know, whether a range of IP address that you allow access to or for simplicity you can just put any IP uh, v4 since we only enable v4 for our environment this prevents you from accidentally locking yourself out of the access or the management interface from the outside but it also opens up risk for any IP address to be able to come in now if you have two tier firewall like me then you can use the KVM uh, or the IP tables to restrict what are the IP address which is allowed in words, right? So I've done that on the IP table side. Uh, but you know, if you're putting your FTD uh, directly connecting to the internet, which is most of the case for branch or remote offices, then you want you might want to, you know, tweak this allowed network to only allow you know a range of management IP that can come in, right? So for me is. I tunnel most of my traffic through the umbrella SIG tunnel so I can just allow the tree range of uh, the SIG IP addresses right, that Cisco provides uh, to you for opening up ports and for allowing ports right? so that minimizes the risk greatly right? when you are managing the FTDB from outside interface on the internet but for this tutorial we're going to keep it simple we're going to allow any IPv4 address to you know manage the management port click on OK and then uh, deploy right you can review and make sure that you have key in properly before you deploy uh, the good thing about the FTD uh, or the FDM or the Cisco Secure Firewall the newer uh, next gen firewall version is that you can actually uh, deploy the job at a later time right you can name the deployment job and then you can choose uh, when do you want to uh, do schedule deployment right but for this we're going to do deploy now okay then let's wait for the deployment to complete the, the last time i did this it actually finished in less than a minute uh, but you know let me just pause it in case it goes longer than a minute okay it's done so you can see that uh, deployments done nothing else to deploy so that's all that you need to do to enable the management interface right um, from the outside uh, interface so i have a client right back home where i tunnel it through the umbrella sick tunnel so you can see if I go into what is my IP address we can see that it is actually tunneled through uh, the 155.190 which is the uh, Cisco open DNS IP address you actually have to open the all three range of IP address because uh, you know the the web access get netted through the umbrella sig tunnel so this range of ip address to change constantly now if you don't then you might have issue with uh connecting to the uh ftd management interface okay so let's now do this enter https i actually have the domain name that i set up so that when i change my server public server every month you know, I change IP address without having to remember the IP address. Okay, so you can see, right? I'm actually managing the uh, FTD from a client from the outside interface, right? So through the internet itself. Now, if we key in the password, okay, we are now logged into the uh, 
FTDV, right? So if we look at a quick setup, right? The IP address is dot two for inside dot one two for outside, right? So um, I might do a video on how to configure the um, IP tables, right? Using destination net and source net to provide that uh, forwarding, right? Um, through the IP tables in the future video, but. For this tutorial, this is all that it is to so quickly open up your management for, for external uh, management. Okay, so let's play around a little bit more, right? Uh, in terms of uh, restricting the IP address, I do have uh, another client that I might have set up, right? That does not, uh, that is not in the umbrella subnet but let's do this right so if we go in over to let's play a little bit with the objects right so i think the objects are very cool right so uh, if you're familiar with ip tables there's uh, this uh, object called ip set right which you can specify uh, ip address with a object name and use that name to you know um, enrich your rules right or make it makes your rule a little bit shorter uh, so same thing, right? I think the modern firewall all has this. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what IP addresses that I want to allow. So I can actually create a uh, network. Let's just add a new network, right? Uh, we can do a network or a range, right? You can do a range or a network. So let's do umbrella. Uh, range of IP address one five five dot one nine zero dot zero dot zero slash sixteen right umbrella sick IP something from one five five let's click OK let's add another network range you can also add network group object okay so play around with this it's actually quite uh, interesting so umbrella sig one five zero i believe is the other range no one five five one so which is one five one dot one eight six dot zero dot zero slash sixteen let's do okay All right you can create uh another dynamic object to do this much easier but uh you know I'm doing this so that we can track some of this IP address one four six right is one four six dot one one dot one one two dot zero dot zero slash sixteen let's do that okay I have now once that's done let's deploy them Okay, while well the deployment is going on, let's go over to our interface and then go back to management access. Now we can go to our data interface, click edit, and then let's add in the IP addresses. So I'm going to add in all the umbrella sig range and then I'm going to add in my other cloud uh, machine that I have so in case I lock myself out I have a couple of networks that I can go to so once I do OK let's just click on OK so and uh, it will prompt me that the other deployment is going on so I won't be able to deploy until it finish we can go to the deployment history and it can tell you 
who actually did the last configuration from which IP address. So, you know, firewall configuration errors can cause a lot of issue. So it's good to have an audit trail so that you can go back to the last person who configure and then check with him what he has done, right? In case uh, something needs to be rectified or, you know, if you see some abnormal behavior coming from, you know, abnormal time zone or abnormal IP address using, you know, uh, user account that I rarely use, well, that could raise a red flag, right? Okay, so take a while. Um, let's go back to the settings device and uh, let's wait for the configuration to complete while I pause the video for a short while. Okay, so this is a classic case of, uh, you know, me logging myself out, right? Uh, because I didn't realize that I'm on a two-tier firewall. Therefore, you know, the IP addresses uh, that are coming in are more than what I have specified here, right? The reason why I know this is because now if I go back to my... VM, I would have realized that, you know, I've locked myself out from the public internet. Okay, so we need to change the IP address or we need to include, right, um, IP address which is my so in, in so in general, I would need to add on a if I'm not wrong the outside IPv4 gateway interface which is okay that should be correct because when through the IP table net transversal I would have that. Let's click on OK and then deploy again. Get it. As you can see, I have not really tried restricting IP previously, so this is also a new learning for me as we go through this setup in my FTD environment. Okay, let's wait for the deployment to finish. Okay, so if you are doing two-tier firewall like me, uh, just take note, right? You need to also in allow the uh, the inside the face of the IP table in my case, uh, you know, uh, uh, or the router IP address. Uh, of the next hop, right, to come into the uh, the FTD, right? So it depends on what firewall you're using. Uh, if you're doing two-tier and having FTD behind uh, another firewall, right, uh, you need to take note of the allow IP address that you want to do. So now you can see we are restricting the IP addresses to a few uh, public subnet as well as of course my outside IP address. Okay, so once that's done, let's hop over to my virtual machine, right? Uh, you saw that it couldn't load just now. So now we can see that it is back to working, right? Just let me, let us make sure that we are still on the umbrella DNS. You can see that the IP addresses changes. Uh, now that, and we can, Yep, so we're definitely connected to the FTDV through the public internet, okay? So that's all for today's tutorial. Uh, this is pretty straightforward, easy to do. Uh, 
Now, if you are going to turn on remote access VPN using Cisco AnyConnect, then you need to find a way either to tweak the AnyConnect client VPN port, or I'll show you in the next video how do you do port forwarding from a non-standard uh, HTTPS port right to the management interface uh inside the ftdv right so f ftdv is really uh easy because you know you don't really need to connect a physical port to the management interface to for this uh um you know port forwarding to work but if you are having a remote site uh where you need physical cable then that's where you need to make sure that your management port is connected right okay but this is for uh, the next tutorial or next video so stay tuned for it and thank you very much for watching stay safe and take care